Hello, my name is Jeremiah Easley. I'm the director of the Preclinical Surgical Research Laboratory here at CSU, and I am accompanied by Dr. Simon Turner, my dear friend, um, and the founder of the Preclinical Surgical Research Laboratory here at CSU over 30 years ago now, correct? So uh, we're just gonna be having some uh, discussions on lots of different topics today, um, covering career and life and marriage and research and everything else. So um, ready to get into it? Okay, so one, I wanted to just kind of talk to you a little bit about your career and how you got started with the Preclinical Surgical Research Laboratory. So how did it, how did you go from being an equine surgeon and then now being a sheep surgeon? Okay, the story goes like this. Uh, I had a bicycle accident and then um, and then I started to lose concentration in surgery and I, then I was told, look, you might want to think of doing something else. And then I was ready to go on a sabbatical and I planned my sabbatical purposely to go to the ASIF center uh, which, as you know, is the is where all the orthopedic human orthopedic research was started in Davos, Switzerland, in the southeast corner of Switzerland. Well, I went there. I got that all arranged, and uh, I fast forward. I was there for six months, and while I was there, Jeremiah, I could see they were using a lot of sheep for their human orthopedic research. And then, because the Europeans are crazy about dogs, you don't use dogs for research in Europe. They're nuts on their dogs. And you'll go to a restaurant and there'll be dogs on the feet under the tables in a restaurant, in a fancy restaurant. So you don't use, and then I saw, aha, sheep. And then I knew we had a lot of sheep in Colorado. And then when I get got back, I spoke to Cleon Kimbling, who by the way has just turned 90 as you know, and he said, I know how to get hold of a lot of sheep and I can, here's the thing, you can get, I can get hold of old sheep. Well, that's when I cued onto the osteoporosis because osteoporosis is a disease of elderly people, mainly in women, and I thought, Maybe if I can use these sheep for a model for osteoporosis. And that's where that's how that all started. And then we started overectomizing the sheep and so on. But I didn't I wasn't totally hooked on osteoporosis. It was orthopedic research in general. And probably one of the most exciting bits of research I, I did was fi figure out. A company called me and said, oh, look, I know you do sheep. We've got an implant, and we're trying to work out a better way to get the bone to bond to the implant because it's going to be used for humans for orthopedic research, you know, for prostheses. Well, fast forward. We did nine sheep, and then the company, then a lady in, uh, in California in the Bay Area, uh, and then a, 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 an orthopedic surgeon in a Bay Area contacted me and said, we've got our first human implantation. Do you want to come and watch it? Uh, uh, it was fabulous. Yeah. And I flew out there, put my, uh, put my scrubs on and went in. And, they, and this lady had an osteogenic sarcoma, uh, uh, Osteos osteosarcoma yeah. of her distal femur, and they were they were taking cutting the femur in the mid femur, and then taking the rest of the leg, leg and throwing it away because it had the cancer, <coughs> and attaching a prosthesis. And I was in the OR. It was kind of cool, and the orthopedics surgeon, a guy called Jim Johnson, said, "Oh, this is Simon." He does sheep research, and this prosthesis was first investigated in sheep, and everyone just dropped. She went on, nine months later, she had kids, and she went on to walk. And now that particular biomet 
did that, re sponsored that. Yeah. That now is in over 300 people wow. for nine sheep. Yeah. That was one of the early ones. And then that led to, um, with my contacts through that guy, he said, I know someone that might be interested in doing spine research. Okay. And then it just snowballed. Yeah, that's when, then, you, that's when it really got on the map. Major. Yeah. And, and that, of course, Howard, Simon, and I have done hundreds, thousands of sheep for spine surgery. Thousands. Well, you mentioned Howie because uh, that was one of the things I wanted to chat with you about. So how did you and Howie get together on these sheep spines? I needed a dog plumber. Someone who plumbs dogs. I needed a, another, because we don't do, I wasn't doing a lot of wobbler surgery or anything. I needed a human, I needed a dog sp um, spine specialist. Uh -huh. And then Howard and I got together and just started together, got our, but our, um, our careers go back before CSU. Way back, right? We shared an office at Saskatoon in Saskatchewan yeah. at the university there. So it was... Now, were, were you an intern at the time? I, or no, I was, on, I was an assistant professor up oh, there okay. in equine. Yeah. In e not not red equine. Right. And he was a uh, small animal. Um, he, was he was small so animal. Was, and was Withrow there? Withrow the was there too. Yeah, so all three of you all were yep. there at the same time. Yep. And then... Were you here, or was Simon was Howie here? I, I was I was here first, and then then Howie came. Well, back. very close. It yeah, may have been the very close the same time. So then Howie just was able to look at a sheep spine and decide, hey, this looks close enough to a dog that we yeah, can precisely, yeah. and and because the size is pretty much similar, it's not like a sheep and a damn horse, yeah. and uh, he could a lot of the techniques and the screw sizes and everything just fit perfectly with the sheep. Yeah. And then uh, the sheep stuff really grew because we'd have, a, uh, we'd have a, a presentation at the ORS, that is the Orthopedic Research Society, as you know, and someone would say, look, I've got a SIPA prosthesis. Can we come to your lab? Ching, ching, and away it went. Yeah. Because it snowballed. And this is all not related to sheep with sore spines. This is for human surgery. Mm -hmm. And then it just snowballed. So why, um, you know, obviously when you went to Davos, you, you saw that they were doing a lot of sheep preclinical research. Correct. Why, yes. why were they using sheep and then why is that? Uh, oh, okay. Well, that's what I, I, I just mentioned. They don't like their nuts on dogs in Europe. So what are the what are the things though that the sheep what makes sheep good as a as a translational well, animal? Well, firstly the size. I mean, if you've got a screw this big, how the heck can you use that in a mouse? Um, it's basically the size. Uh, we have access to them here. They're easy to house, and there's not a lot of emotion in North America about using sheep for research. Not, and there is a bit in Europe, but nothing, there's nothing, it's not like here, because there's millions of sheep in Australia. Yeah. Wool and gold put Australia on the map. Wool and gold. That's how Australia got on the map. Well, you brought it up. So Australia, you come from... A family of with yeah, a couple oh, I, of vets, yeah. Right? I have a I have a brother that's a veterinarian. He's an ophthalmology yeah. specialist. His daughter is a, a small animal, uh, a small animal vet in Melbourne. Um, and my dear wife of forty four years, by the way, is an anesthesia. So there's a lot of vets in our family. But my father was not a vet. He was a dairy farmer, correct? Right. Yeah. I remember um, our trip to Australia together very vividly, and um, the family farm that you showed me was pretty amazing. He got up every day at 4.35 and milked cows for years, and went for years without a holiday. And then I could help him, and then his brother could go for vacation, because the, the, his brother uh, and my father, they were together on the, on the dairy farm. 
Well, when, I, when, when my uncle wanted a vacation, I'd fill in with, for, for, for him. And then my father could take a vacation. He went for years without our vacation. Because you just can't walk away from cows and say, I don't think I'll milk you today. <laughs> no option for that, huh? So did you um, always want to be a vet? I remember my father had a, a cow that was in dystocia, having a difficult time calving. And the vet, and I even remember his name was Kleinak or something like that, came out and delivered that calf. And I saw him. It was a vaginal delivery. I saw him deliver that calf. And I was about oh, 10 years old. I said, Dad, that's what I'm going to do. <laughs> was your brother the same way? No, he. I think he... I think it wasn't until I showed interest that he started to show interest. Yeah. Then he went into... So he's the, your younger or older? He's younger. He's younger. a couple of years younger. Yeah. And he, then he, of course, he uh, went into a private, private farm animal practice after graduation. And then he became a specialist.